Hello, welcome to another session for the course uh, Programming from A to Z. And, oh, except, <laughs> except if you're watching this video, it's called Programming with Text on YouTube because Programming from A to Z sounds like it's a beginner course and this course is really for uh, people who have already gone through my foundations of JavaScript stuff and are want to do more things with programming with text, generating text, analyzing text, and a lot of different things like that. So, um, what, are the, what, what is this playlist going to be about? This playlist is about Chrome extensions and a word that I can't say, bookmarklets. I like to say bookmarklet. No, that doesn't make any sense. That's like the French for le bookmarklet. No, bookmarklets. It's very hard to say, bookmarklets. So why is, why is this interesting? Why is this important? So all of my sessions in this particular course have all been about, I mean, this is not entirely true, but this is a web browser, the sessions have all been about programming kind of what happens inside here, inside the actual content of the page by creating your own, I know, it's a vacuum cleaner because I live in the real world where the things happen, like vacuuming. But I'm gonna just go on. Um, my, sometimes my mind lives in its own universe, though, which uh, hopefully makes these videos somewhat watchable, but, or not, anyway. So, this is what we've been focusing on. And maybe you make uh, an HTML file and a JavaScript file, all sorts of things to make things happen in here. But, work, I'm working with text. So you make a web page, it generates a poem, it makes a chatbot with the user, all these kinds of things that I've looked at analyzes text that a user typed in. But what if what you really want to do is affect the browsing experience as a whole? So what if what you want to do is say, when the user is on the website GitHub, or when the user is on the website of a particular newspaper, their experience, the, that user's experience of browsing that web page changes. Now, this is typically done, and so the, a way to do this is with two different things. One is called a bookmarklet, which is a way of creating a simple bookmark button that can live up here, that can run some JavaScript code to alter and change your view of the current web page you're on. The other is called a Chrome extension. Now, you can imagine here the reason one sort of one, uh, one limitation of me making this tutorial video is that it is a Chrome extension. It is only for the browser Chrome. But it allows you to essentially make, if you think about Chrome like you might think about your phone, you could develop an app for your phone to alter your experience of using your phone. A Chrome extension is like an app for the web browser, Chrome itself, that allows you to alter the behavior of the browser beyond just what's happening in the page. So you can add interface elements, you can know about what people are typing into the address bar, you can create a page that shows up whenever somebody has new tab, you could know that somebody said new tab, you could know, you could, you could pop up a timer whenever a user is on you know, some sort of like social uh, media website to tell them you only have five more minutes to look at this website and then close the tab for them. Anything you could do to alter, subvert, change the browsing experience. Now this exists as a business model because companies can make Chrome extensions to, you know, offer you a coupon or, I don't know, have, have pop up, chat pop up that offers to give you help on that page. I use a Chrome extension called TubeBuddy, I'm now, which I'm now by accident promoting, which gives me extra features to see how to manipulate and know my stats and all this sort of stuff while I'm browsing YouTube. So that's really, but what I want to think about in this playlist are this idea of, I'm just gonna call it for lack of a better word, creative Chrome extensions. So what if you use a Chrome, what if you create a Chrome extension to subvert, distort, change our browsing experience for the purpose of social commentary or art or activism. And I, I should mention there's something important about this. This is not something that you can just put on somebody's computer. You can make a web page, put it on a web server, email all your friends and say, come to my web page, um, but you can't put a Chrome extension on somebody's computer without them opting into that. We'll see that in a moment as we look at the Chrome extension store. However, I'm not really in this playlist going to focus at all about how you can deploy your Chrome extension to the store. I'm gonna show you how to use a Chrome extension in what's called developer mode. 
So you can write and create and debug and edit and change your Chrome extension right there on your own computer. If it's something that you then want to distribute, you can package it and put it into the Chrome store. And I, I assume there's some kind of approval process there, but we're gonna stay with this sort of local development environment. Um, so this is kind of the overall picture. Um, and so in the first, tu first tutorial, what I'm going to do is, uh, as a warm up, kind of look at a bookmarklet, which is kind of a, a, um, a much simpler, lower, Low, lower barrier of entry point to just do something interesting with manipulating the browsing experience. So I'm going to start with that. And that, so if you, if you want to get to the code stuff, you can stop this video now and just go to the next one. But <coughs> what I'm going to do before I get to that is let's look at some examples of some different Chrome extensions. All right, so let's look at a couple examples of things that I'm thinking about. Um, this is a, a bookmarklet called The Deletionist. Um, it was sent to me um, on Twitter, and I believe it actually relates to something that I did a previous video about erasure poetry, kind of, which is that let's try it. So a bookmarklet is a thing that I can drag into the bookmark bar, and then in theory, when I press this button, whoop, it got rid of stuff. <laughs> so let's go to um, let's go to uh, GitHub.com, and let me click the deletionist. Whoop. And it got rid of it. So this is actually very, very similar to one of my favorite bookmarklets called Wordless Web, which actually gets rid of everything on a web page that is text, which has some really surprising and interesting effects. Um, trying to think of uh, one more website that's not going to make me feel so awkward and uncomfortable <laughs> to go to uh, to demonstrate this idea. Uh, but anyway, I encourage you to play with the deletion of So this is something, um, maybe we'll make a bookmarklet that uh, replaces every image on the web page with like kitten, kitten images or something like that. We'll do that. Um, uh, another Chrome extension uh, that I wanted to show you is by one of my favorite artists, um, Addie Wagonnect. Um, her website is placesivenevebeen.com. Um, this is a Chrome extension that she created called Girls vs. Git. Um, I'll just read to you what it does. Every username on GitHub is replaced with a generic female username. Every gravatar is replaced with a gravatar of a woman or female typed image. Um, why there is a death of women contributing to open source software. This plugin is presented as a filter to challenge assumptions about gender roles in software and to rewire your brain. So you can see here, you can imagine, this is a Chrome, one something you can do with a Chrome extension is it only activates when you're on certain web pages and changes your view uh, of that web page. And so you can see this is, uh, um, this is on GitHub. Uh, I will include links to all of these Chrome extensions and bookmarklets in um, the video description. Um, I'm going to come back to Wordless Web. Um, this is a, a Chrome extension that was submitted by, um, I just want to make sure I have the right name, looking in the Slack channel here, I believe, oh, sorry, uh, Noah Van Boven, I apologize for pronouncing the name incorrectly, called uh, Web Paint. Let's try adding it. So if you make a Chrome extension that's in the actual Chrome extension store, you can just go and hit Add to Chrome. Now, here's something really important. This is what I mean by opting in. Chrome extensions get a lot more permission to do stuff beyond what you would normally have just in a generic regular web page. So this Chrome extension says it can read and change all your data on the websites you visit. Presumably, this has been vetted by Google, I suppose, and it's in the Chrome store because it doesn't do stuff like, you know, steal all your passwords, but this is certainly, uh, there's certainly sec security and privacy issues that are at play here. But I'm gonna add this extension, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back to uh, github.com shiftman, A to Z. I'm gonna, now one thing a Chrome extension can do, and we're gonna see this, is you can add menu options to the menu, like this button. So now I'm gonna click this button, Oh, and look, you can even do a pop-up. Oh, I'm going to show you how to do pop-ups too. <laughs> and I'm going to pick this pencil, and now I'm going to just start doodling over it. So this is, by the way, this is very similar to a, uh, what else can I do? This is so fun. This is way better than my example. Ah, anyway, I clicked off of it. But you can see this is something that I intend to make as part of this playlist, a Chrome extension that allows you to use P5.js to draw and make a canvas overlay over your, um, uh, over the web page that you're currently browsing on. 
Okay, uh, another Chrome extension uh, is one called Code Doodles. This is something you can do to, um, I forget what it's called, but to create a web page that appears. So right now, if I make a new tab, I don't have a Chrome, uh, a, a, any extension that replaces the default Chrome new tab, which just shows me the Google search bar and some recently visited sites. But uh, Momentum is another one. All my students all have this one. I should probably install it. But let's try the Code Doodles one. So I'm going to add this one. It says, this one, all it can do is replace the page you see when opening a new tab. Add extension. And so now, every time I make a new tab, I get, whoa, I get some cool, interesting Code Doodle project. Whoa. So I, I would have to research this more to know credits-wise, like, who these are coming from. Um, I wonder if it's still, oh, it's loading. Wow, these are all like super crazy WebGL 3D things, which is kind of wild. So, um, so you can see the range of possibilities. This is a Chrome extension by Melanie Hoff called Decodelia. And I don't know if I pronounced that correct. It's a Chrome extension and glasses set that uses basic principles of color theory to render your browser's content visible only with the use of red, red tinted glasses. So you can see here, I can't see what's going on here, but if I happen to have the red tinted glasses, so I could essentially, if I'm in a coffee shop and I didn't want anybody to see what I'm doing, I could wear my glasses and use my computer without anyone being able to see. And I, this is probably a nice uh, video summary. Melanie is an alum of uh, both the School for Poetic Computation and ITP, the graduate program where I teach. So I encourage you to check out this wonderful uh, Chrome extension. I just want to see if there's a, right, so, um, so you can uh, search for some like things uh, uh, on your own. So this is obviously a kind of like an art project, um, but it actually does work. I've seen it. It's great. But uh, I also wanted to mention uh, Wordless Web, which is one of my favorite projects, very similar to um, <laughs> The uh, Wordless Web, sorry, um, uh, by uh, Corey Forsyth and G. Lee, which this is a, a, a Chrome extension that takes whatever website you're on. So you can see this is an image of Facebook and just gets rid of all the words and all you're left with are just the images. So it's interesting to think about doing one that does the other. So I hope this video gives you kind of a general introduction to the... <laughs> This is the worst diagram ever. Overview of why it is we're here and a range of some kind of creative and artistic possibilities. And what I'm going to do in the next bunch of videos is just really go through the nuts and bolts of how to make these things. And then at some point, hopefully towards the end, I'll do a couple coding challenges to make some quirky Chrome extension or bookmarklet projects. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you maybe in the next video.